Let's take a look at some hose clamps. But hold on a moment. They're not hose clamps. They're electrical test screwdrivers. Yeah, I'm guessing that the factory just got the packaging mixed up because the workers aren't, well, probably fluent in English. And uh, as a result of that, they ended up selling them in places like pound shops, which is where this one came from. That's nothing to do with taking your girlfriend pound town, by the way. Completely different thing. It's like a dollar store in the UK. Uh, same place I got the Shengang Gummy Product, not because I needed insulation tape, but because it was called Shengang Gummy Product. That's the only reason I bought it. Anyway, I digress. Let's uh, pop this packaging open and take a look at the electrical separation in these. Now it's worth mentioning that a properly designed neon driver and they're kind of, they're not even classed as safe for use these days. They, all the electrical authorities are like, oh no, you can't use those and to, de to a degree. Yeah, it's not great. But uh, what really matters, and, and certainly the old ones, oh this is quite difficult to out. Ugh, and why would you want three in the first place? But the old ones used to have significant electrical separation inside. Hold on. Do I stuff this into a live terminal willy-nilly? Uh, I'm going to have to change the exposure for this. <laughs> I I'm hoping uh, this is just a cheap item. I don't even see. You know what? I'm going to open one up before I poke, poke it into anything. So here is a suitable slight abuse screwdriver. Let's use this one as a reference. It has a neon. Oh, it's got a small resistor there. It does look like they've gone for the sort of open shell resistor, but smaller than the usual ones. Okay, I think I trust that. Let's pop it back in. Oh, and then we'll, I'll take a picture so you can see a close up of that afterwards. I will test it and see if it does light up when shoved into a live connection. I can actually deal with a live connection right now by grabbing this electrically unsafe tester from the same country, plugging it in. I don't even know if you're going to see this. You're probably going to hear it if its separation isn't any good. Finger on the end and into a live connection. I can't see a thing. That's why, that's why they, they kind of not approved. I can see it slight glowing. You see it glowing there? No. I'll tell you what, we'll change the lighting and I'll see if I can make it more visible. One moment, please. Okay, this should be better. See, this is the problem. You can see it glowing. It actually is significantly brighter on camera than it is to the eye. And that is one of the main problems with the neon drivers because it's hard to get a decisive is it live or not from them, because it can uh, glow very dimly. However, if you're well referenced to ground, it will be brighter. Well, that's a good thing or not, I don't know. Let's stick other ones in, in the process. Uh-huh, a uh, dull glow in there, mm-hmm. And was it this one has not been tested yet? Mm-hmm, dull glow, right, okay. I shall take some pictures of the guts inside and uh, draw a quick schematic out, and we'll take a look at them. One moment, please. And let's explore, and the construction of this is surprisingly uh, basic to the, like ridiculous level uh, so it starts off that they've got this little quarter watt resistor inner core so this is an actual quarter watt resistor with the coating and the leads butt welded onto the end and there's next to it is the core so basically speaking it's just the inside of a quarter watt resistor um, which is not rated for a very high voltage it's rated something like 200 volts or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure if that's affected by not having the outer coating or it's made worse. But anyway, they shoved it up the end. And I thought when they shoved up the end, they'd trap the lead for a good electrical connection with the neon indicator. But if I draw this on here, they have basically speaking, there's the resistor in here, just shoved up the end with its little cap sticking out the end. And here is the neon indicator inside with its little pip at the top. And they've got one lead just going down like that, just touching it on the end. And the other lead is just folded up and over the top. And then the cap's rammed on and that's basically it. And the neon indicator itself is a custom thing. It's like they've said, oh, we don't want those expensive neon indicators. We'll just use a fairy light, but we'll get a custom-made fairy light neon indicator because it's not going to have a sort of continuous duty. So um, let me show you this. Uh, let me do you a sketch of that. Well, let me show you the, the neon indicator for a start. I'll just put those things out of the way. 
a close-up of it is this. So we've got the glass pinch and the dumet or dumet wire and then the glass bead. Now, normally in a fair light, you'd have the glass bead down here and then the wires would continue through and they'd be folded around this filament with a little support. But in this case, if I draw this, here is the traditional fairy light with its little pip at the end and its seal at the bottom. And the wires go in, you'd have the little bead and the wires go through the seal at Dumet or Dume wire. It's a nickel and iron alloy coated in copper and then it's oxidized or treated in another way to make it perfect for going through glass. But here's the wires and in a fairy light, they just fold over at the end like this and they'd trap the filament and you'd have the little filament just between them, right? What they've done is the same fairy light type thing and they'll have done this for cheapness. They've got the seal, but they've put the bead up here. And they've got the Dume wires come in and going up there, and then they're just cropped short at the top. And then they get the other one come in and going up there. And they're just keeping them spaced. And it's the actual lead-in wire, by the look of it, is just being used for the glow discharge of the neon. Now, normally electrodes in neon lamps uh, would be little uh, rods welded onto those wires for a long life but because because this is by ultimately it, you're touching it to a connection and it's going to run a, a tiny current very briefly while you probe around amongst electrical connections um because of that i guess they don't have to consider how long it's going to last but i have soldered a couple of wires onto one so we can take a look at what it looks like when powered with a couple of resistors, 100K resistors, which is brighter. It's not mega bright. Uh, let's zoom down onto this. Let's get you closer because it's quite interesting. You can see little blips of light at the end. I'll just try and get you a closer look at that. So the slight shimmer backwards and forwards is just the camera speed with the AC signal. But if you can look at the very end, you can see very occasionally you get a little blip of light goes across the wires at the end there. It's very strange. Quite an odd construction of neon lamp. That'll interest the the neon aficionados. Also note the terrible soldering job and how the camera's trying to self-stabilize it with the flicker. That's not great. Uh, let's uh, go back up to the normal position. So that's more or less it. I don't actually recommend these things. Not only are they usually really bad screwdrivers that chew up when you use them, but the neon indication is not. Maybe if you're indoors in a sort of well-grounded environment, it's going to give you some indication, but the construction of this one is just skimped in every way. So I'm not sure I'd actually recommend it. The other ones I've seen used a sort of fuse holder type thing, and they had a solid resistor at the end with the fuse against that, and they had the neon indicator um, or a resistor actually crimped on to the neon indicator and inside the glass tube or a separate resistor externally, which is a common approach to that. Uh, some of them even have the custom neon lamp with a, a, a tube like this, but actually just an electrode in from either end. But um, I don't totally recommend them. There are much better things for doing electrical tests now. In fact, if you're doing proper electrical testing, I do recommend a set of actual professional test lamps for that. But uh, that is it. Interesting neon bulb, interesting construction, uh, cheap, tacky, little hose clamp themed uh, electrical test screwdrivers. Quite odd and unexpected stuff inside them.